Hi guys, in this video we're going to be discussing fission. We will learn that fission produces heat, chain reactions, and then we'll finish with a summary. So what is fission? Well nuclear fission is when a large unstable nucleus splits into fragments. So here is our large unstable nucleus and we see that it splits into large fragments. But there's something else going on here as well. In the process of fission, nuclei usually emit two to three neutrons as well. So here's those neutrons that have also been emitted. So how do we make a nucleus go through this fission process? How do we make it split up? Well, nuclear fission is much more likely if the nucleus absorbs a neutron. So here's this neutron which is going into the nucleus, and so the nucleus is absorbing a neutron. It turns out that doing this makes the nucleus much more likely to split up. We use the word fissionable for an atom which can be split easily. So it turns out that one of the reasons we're interested in nuclear fission is because it produces heat, which we can then use to generate electricity. So energy is released when a nucleus undergoes fission. Some of the energy goes into the kinetic energy stores of the fission products. By fission products, we mean all of the things that we end up with once fission has occurred. So some of the energy from fusion goes into the kinetic energy of these particles and fragments. But not all of the energy is converted to kinetic energy. The energy not transferred to the kinetic energy stores of the products is carried away by gamma rays. So that extra energy is carried away by electromagnetic waves, which are gamma rays. So how are we going to make use of this energy? Well, both the kinetic energy of the products that we talked about and these gamma rays can be used to heat water. So we're going to be talking now about what happens in a nuclear reactor and how we use this energy. So on the left here, we have a picture of a nuclear reactor. In a nuclear reactor, we have lots of fission going on and nearby there is a large amount of water. The energy from fission goes into the thermal energy store of the water. So remember there was two types of energy. There was that kinetic energy of the products and the energy being carried by the gamma rays. But all of that energy we try and put into the thermal energy store of the water. We know that if we heat up water enough, it will eventually boil and turn into steam. That's all very well, but why are we so keen to make steam? Well, when the water is heated to become steam, this steam can be used to drive the blades of a turbine. So here is our turbine, and this turbine has blades which can be pushed to make the turbine spin. We fire our steam at the blades of the turbine to make the turbine spin. So why do we want our turbine to spin? The turbine is connected to a generator. So when the turbine spins, it can be used to create electricity. But we already have lots of different methods of creating electricity, such as coal powered plants. So why are we interested in generating electricity in this way? Well, it turns out that nuclear fission produces around a thousand times more energy than normal combustion that we use in a coal power plant. So this fission here produces much more energy. And so it's a good way of creating a lot of electricity. It's all very well having one fission occur, but to keep generating electricity, we need to keep having lots and lots of nuclei that keep undergoing fission. Well, after absorbing a neutron, we know that a nucleus undergoes fission and then produces two or three more neutrons. So the nucleus takes in one neutron and produces three more neutrons. Now, the good thing about this is that these neutrons can then all be absorbed by other nuclei, causing even more nuclei to undergo fission. So this neutron here goes into this nucleus. This nucleus then splits up as a result and it emits three new neutrons. Each of those neutrons can be absorbed by another nucleus. And the process goes on with more and more nuclei undergoing fission. We call this sort of reaction a chain reaction. We imagine the reactions like links in a chain. Each fission that occurs causes another fission to occur, which then causes another fission to occur. 
And this goes on forever as if we have a chain of reactions. If there are enough nuclei around the first nucleus that undergoes fission, the number of reactions taking place can increase uncontrollably. So we have our first nucleus here, which undergoes fission and emits a few neutrons. Each of these nuclei then emit more neutrons. We started off with one of these nuclear reactions, one of these nuclear fissions. But this nuclear fission was able to cause another two or three reactions. If each of those then causes another two or three, then the number of reactions happening is going to increase and increase and increase. This can be dangerous as a large amount of energy could be released. And in this case, we say that we have reached what we call critical mass. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.